Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Maple University. Today, we'll be teaching you how to play Tribes of the Wind, game designed by Joachim Thorm, artwork by Vincent Dutre, and published by La Boite de Jeux. Let's get to the game. In Tribes of the Wind, players are among the few who remain to try to inhabit a dark and polluted earth. Players will use the cards in their hands and combo off the cards in their opponent's hands to clear pollution, restore the forests, and build villages and temples high up in the trees. The player who can earn the most points by clearing pollution off the grid and filling it up with forests and constructions, as well as scoring the placement objectives that will come from village cards, will win the game. To set up, give each player a player board and the four guide cards which match that board. Each player takes five village pieces, stacking them up here, and four temple pieces, placing one over each of these temple illustrations. These are the buildings you'll be constructing through the game. Place seven wind riders in your capital, this location in the top left corner of your board, and place one or two pollution markers onto each of the marked squares on your player board. In the centre of the table, set up the village cards, element cards and forest tiles. For the village cards with this back, shuffle the deck face down and deal four face up, then deal one to each player. With these slotted to the left of the player's player board, concealing the right hand side of the card. This represents a scoring objective you'll try to reach through the game. The element cards are all of the cards with these four backs. And you'll shuffle them all into one common pile and then deal the top four cards face down beside the pile. This will give you a display of five cards you'll be able to choose from at any time, including the one on top of the deck. Deal five cards from the top of this deck to each player and these should be placed into one of these card trays so that the abilities on the cards are facing you, while the backs can be seen by all other players around the table. For the forest tiles, set aside the starting tiles represented by this flag icon, and return to the box any tiles which don't match your player count. Flip all remaining tiles over to their forest side, this is the one which will show one or more Wind Rider icons, Shuffle the deck and then deal four tiles off the top of the pile. This once again gives you a display of five tiles to choose from during the game. Choose a first player who takes the first player starting forest tile and deal the rest in numerical order clockwise until you run out of players. All starter forests are placed in this top left space and have a starting bonus in resources and actions. Here, for example, four water and three wind riders, and we'll see all of these icons again as we go through the game. Keep the supplies of pollution and water and the game and trigger scoring tile nearby. You're now ready to play. Tribes of the Wind is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. This continues until one player has built all five of their villages onto their grid. This will trigger the end of the game, and you'll finish that round and then play one more round so all players have the same number of turns. Players then count up all of their points based on how well they've filled up their grids and how well they've met any village objectives they've taken. On your turn, you can take one of three actions. These are to play a card from your hand in order to resolve its ability, or you may discard any three cards from your hand to build a temple onto one of your tiles, gaining its benefit. Or you may use the wind riders that you have on a forest tile to convert it into a village tile. You'll complete every turn by redrawing to five cards from the display before play passes to the next player clockwise. The first and most common action is to play a card. There are three pieces of information on this card. In the top left is the card's element, and this will always match what's printed on the back of the card. In the coloured field in the bottom left are the requirements, 
and in the beige field in the bottom right are the effects. Some cards, such as this one, will have two different requirements and two different effects in the same box. To play a card, you must first check that you meet at least one of its requirements, and then choose which requirement you meet. After checking the requirements, you discard the card and gain the effects in the right-hand box which correspond to that requirement. The game has eight different types of requirement, and you can see three of them here. In each of these cases, the elements in your hand must match the requirements of the card to be able to play it. This card would need two fire elements, which you have. This card needs zero water elements, and you have none, so that's allowed. This card needs either two or three fire. It does count itself, but since you only have two rather than three, you gain the lesser of the two effects instead of the greater. This card needs one of each element, and since you have no water, you'd not be able to play it. And this card needs two or three air. Once again, you don't have this, you would not be able to play this card. When a card shows the icon with the purple figures in it, then you'll need to look to the cards of your neighbours to determine whether or how you meet the requirements. The icon with one purple figure represents a neighbour. It could be your left or right hand neighbour. The icon with two purple figures represents both neighbours. And if all three figures are purple, it represents you and your neighbours. When doing these checks, you will only ever compare with the neighbours to your immediate left and right. In a four or five player game, the players sitting opposite you at the table have no bearing on your turn. In the two player game, it's the display of five cards in the middle of the table which takes the role of your second neighbour. So now we'll look at the five types of requirements which involve your neighbours. For this type of card, you gain the lesser of the two effects if one of your two neighbours has the type of card shown, and gain the greater reward if both have it. If neither has one, you can't play the card. For this reward, count how many of that element you have versus how many each of your neighbours has. If you have more than one of your neighbours, you gain the smaller reward, and if you have more than both, you gain the larger. In this case, it's three air versus one and zero, so the larger effect would be gained. This requirement works the same way, but you want fewer of that element than your neighbours. Here the player has zero water, as does this player, so they're tied. This player has two, and so the smaller effect would be gained. For this requirement, count up all of that element owned by you and both of your neighbours. Gain the effect based on the total count, so here it's a count of five, enough to qualify for the lower of the two effects. Finally, for this sort of requirement, count up the number of that element card among you and both neighbours, and that number is equal to x. You'll gain the effect based on that value of x. You can play this type of card in all circumstances, and the minimum value of x is 1, because the card always shares its own element type. For all other types of card, if you don't meet the card's minimum requirement, you cannot play it. There are four different types of effects you can gain from cards. If you gain water, simply gain that much water and add it to your collection. This icon lets you remove that amount of pollution from your grid. This can come from the same or different spaces, and it can come from anywhere on the grid. This icon lets you place a forest tile. Choose any one of the five forest tiles in the display, replenishing it immediately. Pay the water cost for the tile as printed on the card. And then place it into an empty space, which is free of pollution, and adjacent to at least one other tile that you've placed. In this case, this is the only legal placement. Finally, each of these effects allows you to move a Wind Rider one space. Each movement lets you move a Wind Rider from your capital to your starting tile, or from any tile to an adjacent one. Your second action is to build a temple. To do this, first discard any three cards from your hand. It doesn't matter what they are, and it doesn't matter whether you meet the requirements on those cards or not. 
Then choose any one temple from the left hand side of your board. Move it onto any tile that doesn't already have a temple and gain the effect printed next to the temple. These benefits are slightly different on each player board. Timed well, this can be a good way to refresh a stale hand of cards and there are points on offer for the number of temples you build. The third action is to build a village. To do this, you must have a forest tile which has at least as many wind riders on it as it has wind rider circles printed. Move that many wind riders back to your capital, leaving any excess still on the tile. Flip the tile over to its village side, leaving any tokens that were already on it in place, and move a village token from the top of your board to the tile. Next, gain the benefit or penalty for any buildings that are printed on the bottom of the tile. If the tile has a windmill, then there is no immediate effect. If the tile does not have a windmill, then it will instead have this icon, and that means that before flipping the tile over, you must place one pollution marker onto each orthogonally adjacent space, which doesn't already have a tile. In this case, you'd place these two pollution as you flip the tile. If the village has a catapult, then after sending wind riders back to the capital, you may fling any one wind rider from anywhere on your board to any other tile on your board. And if the building has a wind portal, then there's no immediate effect, but in future, you can use a wind rider movement to move from any one wind portal to any other wind portal giving you a lot more flexibility to move around your grid. Finally, choose one of the four face-up village cards from the display, replacing it immediately. You may either gain the immediate benefit on the right-hand side of the card and then discard it, or slot the card under the left-hand side of your board, representing a new objective you'll try to meet for victory points at the end of the game. You have a maximum of four slots for these cards, and you may discard one to make space for another if you wish. There's a wide range of different placement objectives. Here, for example, three tiles on the bottom row, three different colored tiles in a column, specific placements for your villages or temples, collecting sets of village buildings, or covering up all of the certain type of icon on your grid. To end your turn, if you've played or discarded any card, you must now refill your hand to five. If this involves drawing more than one, then you must draw them all before looking at them. Then refill the display. Through the game, each player may level up their capabilities by bringing up to two of their four guide cards into play. And this is done by meeting the two objectives shown in the top right of your player board. The top achievement generally relates to the placement of villages or temples, and the lower requires a certain sequence of forest or village tiles in an orthogonal path. In this case, the path is met, orange, green, green, orange, purple, like so. At the very end of the turn in which you meet either of these objectives, choose one of your four guide cards and then add it below your player board giving you an ongoing power that you can use in all subsequent turns. With only two objectives, each able to be completed once, and four cards, it means you'll only use two of your cards. The player's powers generally make one type of action more powerful, one type of card given added bonus when played, one option for a once per turn resource exchange, and one which gives a bonus when placing a forest tile and you'll choose the two out of the four based on the strategy you're playing. When one player constructs a fifth village, the end of the game is triggered. This player takes the end game token, which is worth five points. Continue taking turns until all players have taken the same number of turns, and then all players take one more turn. Then count up your final scores. All of the possible means of scoring are printed along the bottom of the board. Firstly, count up the number of squares which still have one or more pollution. And then for zero, one or two squares, gain 12, seven or three points. In this case, it would be three points. Count up the total number of forest tiles that you've placed, including your starting tile. And it doesn't matter whether there's a village or not. 
for seven, eight, or nine or more tiles, gain three, seven, or 12 points. So in this case, I would gain 12 points, and there'd be no more points on offer for this one by having placed more tiles. Count up the number of temples you've placed, and gain three points if you've placed three, or seven points if you've placed all four. Gain three points for each of your villages, so here it's 15, and a bonus five if you gained this token. Finally, score any of your village objectives whose requirements you've met. Here, a column with three different forest colours is worth eight. Temples in the right place is worth 10. Villages in the right place is worth 10. But having built only two catapults, I miss out on these seven points. The player with the highest score wins. If tied, whoever has the most leftover water wins. And if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Tribes of the Wind. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for Board Games Journey. Any questions, comments and feedback are all welcome in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.